If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, January 18th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Professional swimming is not an endeavor that guarantees riches for the large majority of athletes. That's why you see many of them traveling the country for clinics or racing in various meets to win prize money. But there's a new way athletes are looking to raise money to support themselves, and it's through the popular crowdfunding trend. Just recently, Dream Fuel came online for just that purpose, and my guest today, Open Water star Christine Jennings, is using that website to help raise money to keep her dream alive of competing in the 10K swim at the 2016 Olympics. And joining me now from the Starbucks in Broomfield, Colorado, on her way to the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, is Christine Jennings. Christine, it's good to see you. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thanks. So um, I have to say this Dream Fuel website seems like a pretty good idea for professional athletes. You hear all the time about crowdfunding being used for people, you know, to make movies or something like that. So it's, it's rare to hear about athletes doing something like this. So tell me how you got involved with Dream Fuel. Uh, I got involved with Dream Fuel through Emily White. She messaged me on Facebook one day and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it, and I jumped on that train right away. I was really excited about the potential for that, especially being one of the first athletes to actually do that, and to see this take off would be amazing, even for other athletes that come after me to try this out. So. Well, I want to mention also that USA Swimming National Champion David Plummer is on this Dream Fuel website. And right now, there's just six of them, six athletes on this. Um, it, as we said, it's very new. Um, according to your personal page on the DreamFuel.me website, your goal is to raise $10,000. Is that right? That is correct. So where, how will this money be used? The money will be used, uh, number one priority is to help pay my coach. I lacked a lot of funds last year and paid him off of prize money and he was amazing and very helpful for agreeing to that and another thing it will go to are races coming up throughout the summer I have a race in Poland that I have to pay my way pay my accommodation for I have a race in Hong Kong that we get some reimbursement for that race but it typically does not come close to covering the cost for that race yeah, and, it, it, it's pretty interesting that, um, you, know, op, you know, pool swimmers, there's always a meet going on. So there are a lot of opportunities to race here in the United States, but there aren't in open water. So you do, like most people, find yourself having to race around the globe a lot. Um, but I understand these, these races, you win a lot of money, it's like upwards of $10,000 or more. It's very rare to find that kind of race. Uh, I, the Poland race, there is the $10,000 prize money, but it's only 10000 5000 3000 for one, two, three. And if you get pulled, it's a 20K race. It's really cold water. Emily Bruneman went last year, and she ended up getting pulled. And you never know what your chances are for coming out with that top prize money. It's kind of a gamble a lot of the time. <laughs> Well, you're part of the uh, USA Swimming Open Water National Team, so do you get any kind of a stipend from that? I do. I, you had to be qualified top two in the U.S. at nationals to get a stipend. So it's not many people get it, and there's no potential for, say, like Emily, she finished fourth at nationals, but yet she won the World Cup circuit, and she doesn't get a stipend, and it's hard to see that, and... You know, and there's, we have such a deep field of women in the open water, and they're all amazing. So. Well, obviously, you know, it, it is a rough situation for open water swimmers, but the sport is becoming so much popular. So what, 
I mean, I would imagine that you would like to have a lot of open water swimmers here in the U.S., uh, open water swimming races here in the U.S. so that you can win a lot of money here. But what else can USA Swimming do to help open water swimmers in this growing sport? I think they're doing, they're putting in a lot of effort and they actually got a race funded for April. It's the Fran Crippen race and it will be held mid-April sometime in Fort Myers, Miramar Lakes. And there's a 10,000 prize money like for overall, also will be dispersed between men and women. I, I don't know how far it goes down in place, this, but like they accomplished that this year. And it's a one week after the race in Mexico. So we're hoping a lot of inter the international people will stay an extra week to swim in that race. Yeah. So they have put a lot of efforts toward that. They have tried to help us as much as they can. So it's been, they've been helpful. I would imagine you'd want those international people to stay away to kind of increase your chances of winning some money. <laughs> Well, in a way, after last year, I traveled international every single month last year except one. And the amount of experience I gained last year was incredible. And it was just because of the different types of races, the different bodies of water I was in, the different competitors I raced against, all really put me ahead of where I ever thought I would be in the sport. Well, talking about this Dream Fuel thing, as I said, your goal is to raise $10,000. To go to a typical um, competition internationally, what would be the average cost? Hmm. Okay, so for about, we'll take Poland, and it's about, I, the past two years I spent about 1500 to 1600 on a flight. Um, I normally get there, it's, you have three days, that the race could go off to one year I got there and I had two full days before I raced. Last year I got there, I got there at night and I had one day and then the next day, I, the next morning I had to get up and race at 20K or 19 and a half K and it was like, whoa. And just because I wanted to limit the amount of time I spent in the hotel to save money. <laughs> So it, it, so, can, it can be a pretty expensive endeavor, and I guess even after the, the prize money you win, I mean, that's basically to cover just your rent money and groceries and everything, so you don't really, I wouldn't, I would say you probably don't even make a profit on, on stuff like this. No, like I think averaging total with Poland, it hit somewhere over 3000 and then you get taxes taken out, and so you're making about half of that. Wow, interesting. Well, um, you train in Colorado, you live up in Boulder, and uh, you mentioned your coach, uh, you train at Rally Sport Aquatics with age group swimmers. And I mean, obviously training in Colorado has the benefits of training at altitude, but um, why do you stay there instead of going to, you know, maybe to a club where you can be able to train with people in your 20s who are also open water swimmers? Uh, well, I've really enjoyed my move back here. I never thought I would enjoy training with age groupers, high schoolers, and, you know, you think, you, okay, I can put up with this for about a year and we'll see how far we get. And they really, we've really clicked and connected and, and the kids here are very, I guess they're very mature for their age and they push me, like, just they're there to cheer for me during practice or they're telling me to get better, to, you know, I'm still rehabbing my knee, and it's just like, come on, Christine, you can get better. I know, like, when are you going to be back? And it's just kind of keeps me looking forward to, to towards tomorrow and to do better. And I think having encouragement like that has been much better than having someone who would just train neck and neck with me all, every single day. And that has worked, I think better for me having my head in the game more than just having physically being training all the time. Yeah, that makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, I would imagine your big goal for 2014 is make the Pan Pacific Championship team, right? Yes, of course. Well, there's a, I know, like you said, the field is wide. It's very diverse. And, and I remember, um, you know, World Championship qualifying last year, it was so close and just came down to 
you know, tenths, hundredths of a second, which is, you know, people don't think open water races come down to that. So um, I'm sure that's always going to be your, that's going to be on your mind every single day. <laughs> well, not quite yet. <laughs> I'm looking short term and just my next big competition is actually Western sectionals in the pool. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah, I you do a lot of pool racing. So I, I'm sure that that still helps keep you fresh and mixes things up. Yeah, I'm trying to be very courageous right now. Just keep pushing forward and not let what everything with my um, I've been rehabbing my knee. I had surgery in November and the PT kind of messed me up here in Boulder and I got set back a lot. And so I've been going to the training center trying to catch back up and I'm getting there and I'm getting better each week and it's really awesome to see that and so from there it's just like trying not to get down and really look forward and you know I just have to remind myself with, like at the end of each day that you know I will try again tomorrow and I see that as courage. Well that's another benefit of being on the national team you can just hop down to the training center anytime you want and take advantage of all those amenities they have there. I'm really blessed to live here like that's another reason why I don't want to leave is the people I know here in Colorado have really helped me. People outside of swimming, people down at the training center, coaches. It's all worked out really well for me. Well, I know you got to head down there. Before you go, we'll submit you to our final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the show. We'll shake it up a little bit for you, have a little open water feel to it. Um, first question is, what has been the best open water venue that you've competed in? That might be a toss-up. Uh, one of them is Elat Israel. It's a southern tip of Israel. We had a competition there, a World Cup race. I think Junior Open Water World Championships will be held there this year. But that was definitely just absolutely gorgeous and really, really like that. Um, the other place I really enjoyed was Rio de Janeiro. And I just really love the people in the town and racing on a beach. It was just, that was another drop dead gorgeous place as well. Well, hopefully you're back there in two years. Okay. Um, besides the job of a professional swimmer, what's a career or job you would like to try? Uh, right now, I'm just looking towards grad school and to go and there's a graduate program through the International Olympic Committee in Switzerland that I want to try out, and it's mainly for being business and but focusing on sports. So we will see if that's a potential after Rio. Um, but yeah, marketing is mainly my forte, and I would love to stay in that and somehow relate that to sports. Okay. Um, on the flip side of that, what's a career or job you know you would not like to try? Okay. Computer technician. <laughs> I agree with you there. Um, going back to open water swimming, uh, what is the furthest you've ever? What's the furthest distance you've ever swum in a race? That would be the 25k in Barcelona this year. That was the furthest I have ever swam. That's that's far. That's really long. <laughs> I was really proud of myself for finishing that race. <laughs> I would be too, and I think I'd have to sleep for three days to get over it. <laughs> um, yeah, I caught a flight the next morning. <laughs> yeah, well, just to knock yourself out and sleep all the way home. <laughs> all right, Christine, last question. Where do you like to go most for vacation? Um, I actually did take a vacation last year. Believe it or not, it didn't involve swimming. I actually went to London with my dad, and that was really, really awesome. I enjoyed it a lot. So that was like my first vacation in eight years. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, you've seen some great places around the world, so you can kind of count those as mini vacations, I guess, if you want. All right, Christine. <laughs> vacation, yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a safe trip down to Colorado Springs. Best of luck with not just your Dream Fuel campaign, but um, getting back into uh, prime shape. We'll see you at Nationals. Thank you. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. To donate to Christine Jennings or David Plummer's Dream Fuel campaign, just go to dreamfuel.me and click Browse for Athletes at the bottom of the page. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.